All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I'm here today to raise awareness about mental health issues. Now, during this Wellbeing Week, there have been a number of great talks and activities and advice and strategies to cope with stress, anxiety, depression, etc. But I'm not here today to tell you about my coping strategies or even my story about how I overcame it all to follow my dreams and become a scientist. No, I'm not here to do that. I'm here to tell you my story, how I got here and how there have been times I did not cope and how it has been a struggle and how hard it has been to live and work with mental health issues. My hope is that by being truly honest about my journey and by saying those things that many are too ashamed or too embarrassed to say, that I may help those that don't, that don't suffer to understand a bit better um, and to, to reassure those that do that you are not alone. My hope is that with more understanding, attitudes will change the stigma will be lifted, that people like me will no longer need to give talks on coping because academia will be a place that allows us to cope and to flourish. So, who am I? Well, my name is Dr Jenna Kenyani. I have been at Liverpool University for just over 12 years now. I have a 2-1 degree in biochemistry and I then went on to do my PhD here and that actually is still one of my biggest achievements to date. I'm now on my second postdoctoral position yeah, and I'm doing cancer research. During my fo first postdoc, I helped re-establish the disabled staff network and this is also known as the DSN. I joined the DSN because I felt strongly about raising awareness about all disabilities. Many disabilities have been heard of these days but not everyone understands them. And there's still, there are a lot of people that don't really understand what they entail. We try and give, give help and advice to staff that are struggling, as well as organizing events and increasing awareness. The reason I'm passionate about all disabilities is because at the age of 12, I was diagnosed with two disabilities. I'm dyslexic and I have a short-term memory problem. These are not easy disabilities to live with and have made my life very hard at times. Achieving my dream of becoming a scientist seemed almost impossible at times. And then about six years ago, this became even harder when I started with my third disability. This disability is a truly awful illness which at times has been completely debilitating and, I've, and has nearly destroyed everything I had worked so hard to achieve. But despite how bad this disability is, I often would refuse to accept I had it and was too ashamed or too embarrassed to ask for help. Even today, I struggle with the words. I suffer from severe depression and anxiety. But why is there this fear of saying those words? Because people still judge. And maybe this is because people don't really understand. They don't understand what it's like and what it, what it is and what it's like to live with. And it is hard to, to understand what it's like if you've never experienced it. But if people are too afraid to talk, then how will anyone ever understand? And that is why I've started giving talks like this one today to try and get more people understanding, more people talking, and hopefully more people helping. But it is not easy to talk about. I went through many, many hours and a lot of crumpled up bits of paper to find the best way to explain what it's like to live and to work with depression and anxiety. And whilst I was thinking about how I was going to explain it, I realised it was going to be really difficult. It was going to be difficult to explain what was going on inside my head when even I don't understand what's happening inside my own head. 
How do I explain that for the last six years, six long years, I wake up every morning and I have a battle with myself to get out of bed. <coughs> that part of me just wants to get up and get ready like a normal person and just be happy. But I can't. I just lie there. I lie there with this big black monster sat on top of me, suffocating me, weighing me down. You're worthless, it says. What's the point of getting out of bed? No one likes you. They just pretend to. You're useless at your job. You are so stupid. <coughs> and you're fat and you're ugly. Why even bother, it says again. But is it the monster? Or is it me? I mean, those thoughts that are happening inside my head, they must be real. They must be true. How do you explain that? How do you explain that in the last six years I feel like I've lost myself? That I don't know who Jenna Kenyani is anymore. That I don't know if the person I was before all of this was even real. Or if this is who I really am. That I have forgotten how to live. How do I explain what it's like when people say to me, but you can't be depressed. You're so happy and smiling. You're always going out and doing things. How do you explain that not everyone acts depressed? That I am so scared of people seeing that side of me, of judging me, of not wanting to hire me, be friends with me, date me, that I have perfected the art of concealment. That every morning after I've had my shower, put on my clothes and my makeup, I then put on my mask. That behind my smile, there is a raging battle going on. A battle to not let those bad thoughts win. To stop the black cloud suffocating me. To stop the monster winning. And to just keep on living. However, sometimes things do get too much. Too hard to hide and the mask slips. People start to see I'm not my happy self. That I'm upset, I'm stressed, I'm tired. That I'm pulling away, I'm avoiding them. That I don't want to come out anymore. I don't want to do the things I normally did. But how do I explain what is happening when I just get asked? But what have you got to be depressed about? Or Everyone gets stressed and has problems. Yours aren't that bad. Let it go. Be positive. Get on with it. Oh, I know. I know I have nothing to be depressed about. I have a house, a car, a job, a PhD, friends. As I keep being told, I have a good life. And they're right. So many people have it so much worse. Why am I being like this? I feel so guilty. Oh man, the guilt. The guilt that I am depressed over nothing. It consumes me. I am drowning. I am drowning in guilt. I feel so guilty. I can't deal with life. I am so pathetic. <coughs> I am so weak. I don't deserve this life. And so the spiral continues. And so the spiral gets worse. How do I explain that this doesn't just affect my personal life, but my work life as well? How do I explain to my colleagues, to you all here, who work incredibly hard, have a lot of stress and a lot of responsibilities yourselves, that some days, some weeks, I just can't cope. I can't cope with life and that it's different. It's different to just being stressed. How do I explain that some days the reason I snap or I struggle when I'm given that extra bit of work is because I want to scream. I want to scream, do you not know how hard it was for me to get out of bed today? That I am so relieved that I am not in bed, curled up in the fetal position crying, trying to convince myself 
that life is worth living. How do I explain that some days, some days I wish I could just get hit by a bus or fall down the stairs so I didn't have to do that lab meeting, write that paper, finish that experiment, as it all just seems too much. How do I explain that for nearly every day for the last six years I've cried? That I know every room, stairwell, corridor and store closet in my building where I can hide and I can cry alone when I can't fight the blackness anymore. How do I explain what it's like to daily, sometimes hourly, have panic attacks? often due to a piece of work or a meeting or a presentation? How do I explain that those panic attacks aren't always about the work themselves, but can be about all my worst fears? That I can be paralyzed in pure fear, panicking that everyone will realize how stupid I am, that I'm gonna lose my job, that that mole is cancerous, I'm going to die, my parents are going to die, I can't get hold of them, something's happened, oh God, I can't breathe, my heart is beating so fast, it's painful, it's gonna come out my chest, why can't I breathe? I feel dizzy, what's wrong with me? Why can't this end? I'm gonna pass out, I'm gonna be sick. Oh God, what is happening to me? How do I explain all of this? How do I explain that when you stop and you ask me, are you okay? That I reply with, I'm fine, I'm just tired because I'm too scared to tell you how I really feel. But it's not a total lie. I am tired. Oh man, I am so tired. I'm either tired because I'm not sleeping or I am tired because all I want to do is sleep. But mostly, mostly I'm tired of fighting. It's exhausting. It is so exhausting to keep fighting yourself with often no one there to help. It is exhausting to have this battle with this monster, or as my mum likes to call it, my fight with my Dementor, the creature from Harry Potter that sucks all hope and all happiness from a person. And whilst this raging battle is ongoing, I have to keep on going. I have to keep on doing everything else. Keep on going to work, cleaning the house, making meals, seeing friends. And I am just so tired. How do I explain that the tiredness affects my ability to work? That not only does it affect me doing normal things, but it makes my dyslexia and my memory get worse. It can take a dyslexic three times as long, if not longer, to read and process something a normal person can. It takes even longer when you're tired. How do I explain that I have to keep a timetable diary of every day of every week? Because otherwise I will forget what I have done even by the end of that day. That I have a routine every morning so that I don't forget anything. Because if I don't, I might forget to put my shoes on. How do I explain that when I'm tired, every aspect of my day gets 10 times harder? How do I explain that on the days I'm really bad, that I can't even remember the word of the thing you put letters in? And if I can't remember that, how am I supposed to remember what protein interacts with what from the paper I read? How do I explain that? How do I explain that I'm too scared or too embarrassed to ask for help? I feel bad that I struggle and I worry I can't work as hard as everyone else. I feel bad I already have disabilities that mean I can't work as well as a normal person. So I try and work harder to make up for being unable to cope. I constantly worry I'm a burden, that they wish they'd never hired me. 
I worry that people think I'm exaggerating or making it up. That I'm just being lazy or I'm trying to get out of my work. I worry it will stop me progressing if I say too much. I can't be an academic if I can't handle it. How do I explain that when I finally manage to pluck up the courage to ask for help, that when I receive it, I don't suddenly get better? Or if I do get a bit better for a little while, then it might come back. How do I explain that I don't ask for help a second time? Because I feel like I don't deserve it. That I've had my help. How do I explain that I'm worried everyone is just, just going to get fed up with me? How do I explain when they just want to know, am I better yet? One of the hardest things about explaining about mental health issues is that it can't be seen. It can't be seen, it can't be touched, it can't be measured. That you don't look sick or like you need help. But mental health issues are an illness and they should be treated like one. It should not be this grey area where people know about it but don't want to talk about it. It was not that long ago that people talked about cancer in hushed tones. It was called the big C. But now we understand it more and it's talked about often. But imagine if we talked about cancer like we do about depression. Imagine a colleague coming up to you and saying, I feel guilty for taking time off because of my cancer. Or imagine saying to someone with cancer, everyone gets a bit of cancer now and then, just need to get on with it. Or, you've had cancer for ages now, why aren't you better? Or imagine say, saying yourself, I am embarrassed, I have to take medication to battle my cancer. If we wouldn't say it to someone with cancer, an illness they have no control over, then why do we say it to people with depression or mental health issues? One in two people get cancer. One in four suffer with mental health issues. Those numbers aren't so different. There are more than 6,000 deaths per year in the UK and Ireland by suicide. That's one death every two hours. And it's at least 10 times that number of attempted suicides. If those figures were for any other illness, any other condition, we would be pouring research into it, trying to help it, trying to reduce it. And yet, most suffer in silence. I came here today to try and increase the awareness and understanding of depression and anxiety. And I hope I've been able to help you understand a bit more what it's like to live, work and suffer with these issues. There is a still a lot of work to be done to change attitudes and understanding. There is still a barrier of stigma and lack of understanding. The barrier of lack of support or not the right support. And the barrier that those suffering don't believe they deserve the support. I believe the first steps to breaking these barriers is awareness. I think there is a belief in academia that you can't show any sign of weakness, that you're supposed to be really clever and have it all together. You're supposed to be really good at everything and you definitely believe everyone is better than you and can cope better than you. To anyone, that has ever felt like this, I want to say it is okay. It is okay to feel like you can't cope. And to anyone here who is or has ever suffered, you are not alone, I understand. You are not a failure or pathetic or weak. You are so 
strong. Stronger than you will ever give yourself credit for and stronger than most people will ever know. Do not stop fighting. Someone does care. It is worth it. You are worth it. It will get better. It will be okay. I would like to end on one last point. I often get asked what people can do to help. Firstly and most importantly, talk to that person. Don't be afraid. Don't be worried about the right thing, what the right thing is to say or that you're going to say the wrong thing. Let them know you care. Let them know you want to listen. Each person is different and each will need help in a different way. But encourage them to get help and, and support because they will often believe they don't deserve it. Be willing to make adjustments if you are a supervisor or be willing to be understanding if you're a colleague, a friend or a loved one. Someone once said to me they didn't want to give too much support to a person suffering with a disability because they were getting an unfair advantage and I responded with this analogy. If there were two people in a workplace doing a job, one was five foot ten and the other was four foot ten. Their job was to count how many fences a horse can jump in a field. But surrounding this field was a five foot five fence. Is it unfair to give that four foot ten person a step to stand on to see over that fence? Or is it allowing both to do their job equally? I would like to thank you for coming today and thank you for listening and I hope in some way this might have been helpful to you. As I said before, I will take questions if there are any and I will wait around if anyone wants to speak to me. But thank you very much for coming.